Now for the muscle and tendon injury in the shoulder, how we can diagnose those injuries using special tests. Let's start with the rotator cuff. You can sustain tendinopathy or maybe possible tears there. Um, if you have a long-term chronic tendonitis, tendinosis going on for a long time, that can certainly increase the risk of you sustaining a partial or sometimes full thickness tear in a tendon. Pain, I think I mentioned this before. If you are to ask them, okay, can you pinpoint your pain with one finger or is the pain located superficial or deep? They'll typically say it's a deep pain that they cannot touch. And uh, they'll typically say it's not a pinpoint pain. It's got a general lateral arm area around the deltoid. It's definitely going to be difficult for them to pinpoint. It's kind of just area pain. If it's more about tendonitis, tendinosis, they might complain some clicking and popping with uh, motion because of maybe the thickening of the tendon. If it's grade 2 or more, higher degree of a strain of a tendon, then maybe they'll report the sensation of pop when, at the time of the injury. If you're to palpate the tendon, it's going to be very tender. You will find a ten, um, tendon pain and weakness upon minor muscle test and then pain with the stretch of the particular muscle. They're typically neurologically intact, meaning that they don't typically complain any numbness or tingling. Um, in order for you to reach the final diagnosis, you're going to have to get an imaging, typically MRI. And this top imaging right here is actually showing you the tear of the infraspinatus. This is a humeral head, a carmine process, and crocoid process, supraspinatus running this way, and then infraspinatus, you're going to see increased tone, whitish color, which would indicate tearing and swelling within the uh, infraspinatus muscle fibers. And the bottom two are showing you the supraspinatus tendon tear. So as the supraspinatus tendon comes through the silver chromium arch, inserting on the humerus, you're going to see a little bit of a tear right there in this MRI. Similar imaging here, humeral head, a chromium process, tendon running through right underneath, and then you're going to see a lot of in um, increased signal over here looking very white, indicating the tear. So, what are some of the special tests that we can perform to diagnose a rotator cuff tear? Classic two here, or you can use it for supraspinatus muscle strain and or tear, empty can and full can. You're going to perform these two tests in a very similar position. You can typically perform that as a sequence. So, arms out, abducted to 90 degrees, and then bring in slightly horizontal adduction of 30 degrees. Turn the thumbs down like you're emptying a can of coke or whatever, okay? You're going to apply downward pressure right at the forearm to see if um, you can find any pain or weakness in two arms. Uh, you can compare both sides at the same time to see if there's any pain or weakness on one side compared to the other. Similar concept with the full can. Only difference is you turn in the thumbs hand up, okay? Like you're keeping the can full, okay? Looking for exact same thing, pain and weakness, uh, you can use it to diagnose a supraspinous injury. Although these two tests are very, very famous, the diagnostic value of these two tests are very questionable. You're going to see um, some inconsistent numbers, but also some very low numbers such as 40s and 50s and 30s. So maybe this is not as good as what um, people might think. Next tests are known as drop arm test and the REN test. These two tests are also for supraspinatus specifically. For the drop arm test, you're going to passively, passively abduct in the shoulder up to 90 degrees. And from there, you're going to ask them actively, gradually lower the arm. Okay, so this is active component. You're going to ask them to gradually lower in the arm. If they lose the control of the arm and then see the sudden drop of the arm, that would indicate a supraspinatus tear. REN test is a palpation test. So you're going to use this finger to kind of dig underneath the chromium process, okay? And you're going to fully extend this patient's uh, granohumeral joints so you can actually palpate the supraspinatus tendon insertion area, okay? From there, you're going to um, internally rotate and externally rotate the shoulder back and forth. Okay, to really, what you're trying to really do is trying to palpate the supraspinatus tendon. If there is a palpable gap or depression over the tendon that's bigger than one finger width, we consider that as a positive test and then that would indicate the supraspinatus tear. Now for the diagnostic values, what you would see is somewhat consistent number for 
specificity for the drop arm test. This might be a one of the better tests to rule in this condition. Ruling out is very questionable. Very, very questionable. For the rent test, there's only two people, two groups of people, I guess, studied this test. Uh, quadus is very low, 9 and 6, but those numbers are looking very, very high. So I don't know what you think of that. Um, I will definitely think that it's a very easy test to perform just looking for a palpation palpable divot. So why not? I would personally definitely consider using this test during my examination. Now, next two special tests are known as external and internal rotation lag sign. These two tests are very similar in the way that you're going to move the patient in a very specific position and ask the patient to hold that position. Okay, so first one, external rotation lag sign. As the name would indicate, you're going to have them perform external rotation in a very specific position. So passively abducting the shoulder to 20 degrees with the elbow flex to 90. From this position, you're going to perform the max, the maximum external rotation and ask them to simply hold the position and you let your hands go. Okay? If they cannot hold that position, that's a positive test for possibly you can test anything from supra to infra to teres minor, kind of all together test. Now for the internal rotation lag sign, you're going to put your patient in this, uh, bring them into this lift off position, okay? So this hand behind their back and ask them to hold this position. You let your hand go. If, you, if they cannot hold that position, that's a positive test for sab scapulalis tear. Okay, so this one is specifically for sab scap, nothing else. Although these are not famous tests, I would actually recommend you using these tests and then you're gonna see why. Because what I see here is a very, very consistent, great, solid numbers to rule in this condition. Even ruling out, I do see some bad numbers here. Okay, but I also see some high numbers at the same time. So this actually is one of the very decent special tests for you to use for rotator cuff tears. Similar numbers for the subs cap. Okay, ruling in looking awesome. Ruling out even that is looking very solid. Okay, so these two special tests, those are very new and may not be 100% famous, but might be one of the most powerful special tests for you to use. Two more special tests, and both of them you can use it for sap scap. It's something that we already went over, okay, as a manual muscle test. But you can actually use that as a special test to diagnose sap scap tear. Lift up, I'm pretty sure you already know, but from this position, ask them to lift this hand off the back, okay? If they cannot lift or have significant weakness, we consider that as a positive test. Belly press, same deal. Um, and especially this is going to be a good alternative test if they cannot even get to this position ask them to simply press the belly in front if you're going to see some cheating signs such as bringing the elbow back or using the wrist flexion to push the belly instead of the internal rotation at the shoulder you would consider the positive test for subs cap in terms of the numbers both tests probably are not going to be very effective ruling out the condition for ruling in, I see very solid numbers across the board. Especially this 44 is a fantastic number with the 98 specificity here. And similar numbers here, some very high ability to rule in the subscap uh, muscle strain. Not so good for maybe ruling out the condition. Okay, so all, out of all these uh, special tests, I definitely want you to know which special tests you can use for which muscle, okay? And what are some of the more but better tests for you to use, mainly to rule in the condition. You might need to create a chart like that to organize those information, okay? Now, one more injury that I have here is the biceps uh, brachii tendon, okay? Tendinopathy and or tears. Many injuries possible in this area, anything from tendonitis, tendinosis, to tenosynovitis because you do have this tendon sheath surrounding the long head of the biceps tendon. You can possibly rupture the tendon. And also, it's possible for some people to experience some um, tendon subluxation. If you have expensive tear over the transverse ligament here, 
the near tendon, the long hand of the biceps tendon will start to slip out of the groove and then flip back and forth every time you move and then that's what we call uh, biceps tendon subluxation. Not a very common injury, but sometimes you can actually see that tendon popping in and out of that groove. Now, there's a video that I want to play, if I can play here. Strong, strong. Okay, and I want you to see what's about to happen in this video. So this guy, oop, oops, something happened in his arm. He was trying to lift this crazy amount of weight, which I could never do. But let's take a little closer look of that arm, what happened. If they're gonna play that slow motion video. You can actually almost see whoop, that tear right there popping up the biceps tendon. Okay, so this video actually would indicate the um, incident of biceps tendon rupture. So here's a little bit more information on that. When you sustain this biceps um, tendon rupture, what you're going to see is something known as Popeye deformity. Okay, like this. This is not a gun show. What you're seeing here is the bulging of the muscle because the person experienced a rupture over here over the proximal tendon. So the muscle just start to kind of boil up right there, looking like a muscle, like Popeye muscle. Okay, but it's actually just a chunk of muscle start to boil up because of the, t the tendon rupture. Typically when you sustain a massive rupture like this, you're going to see nice ecchymosis. Okay, remember this is not a bruising, this is ecchymosis. But the amount of that internal bleeding that we see, it's typically going to be massive. To a special test that we can use to diagnose this injury, not necessarily rapture, but more of a tendinopathy, or the special test that we already went over for slap lesion. Remember, slap lesion is closely related to biceps tendon, so these two similar tests can actually stress the tendon itself, so we can potentially use that to diagnose the bicepital tendinopathy. Again, speed test palpate the biceps tendon, fully supinate, and then ask them to flex all the way. Yugerson test, you're going to start with the fully pronated position, elbow flexion 90, and ask them to supinate and externally rotate the shoulder at the same time. What do you think of the numbers? Now, it's very difficult to say. I see some very low numbers, but maybe most of the numbers are somewhat high, maybe a little bit better to rule out than in. And it's very difficult to make comments in the Yugerson test because there's only one study that's being done which might indicate a better ability to rule in, not so much out, but quadus is not the best. Of course, other than these two special tests, you can perform a simple minor muscle test for the biceps brachii. Combine that with the close palpation over the muscle tendon, sorry, the biceps tendon, to fully achieve this diagnosis.